Good afternoon, Facebook friends. Live from London, from my shop, Bishop Instruments and Bows, I'm Sean Bishop, director of uh, this business. And today I'm going to talk to you about... Sorry, my assistant's laughing there. Um, today I'm going to talk to you about the Voller Brothers family. Now, this is my third attempt. We've had problems with the uh, Wi-Fi and stuff like that, so I hope you're, you're getting this. But anyway, I'll do my best. Um, okay, so the Voller Brothers. Let's start about them. Uh, we have three brothers, William, Alfred and Charles. Uh, William was born in 1854, Alfred in 1856 and Charles in 1865. Um, one of them played violin, one played cello, one played viola. So they had all the instruments covered. And then during this period, they were, like I said, they were mid -Victor born in Victorian times. Um, they started making for Hart and Sons violins as a violin shop in about 1890. And before that, we don't really know that much about how they got into the business. We have um, evidence that they worked for the Chano family, the, the French Chanos, who were working in London. Um, so something they must have been taught somewhere, but there's actually no written evidence that says we learnt off so and so, we we, we trained with so and so. And it's interesting because Charles Voller was around until. Um, 1949 when he died. So you would think there would be a bit more written down, but it was all, they were all very shady in, in a sense that no one knows much about them, about their past, how they did what they did. So basically they came as three musicians when, and ended up making fantastic violins. Um, now, is there anyone out there? I'm just not sure. I'll keep going. Um, okay, so let's have a look at a violin. Here we have a very fine um, Stradivari copy made by the Vollers for Hart and Sons Violins in 1893. Can everyone see that? I'm just not getting much about anyone. Oh, there's one person. Yes, good. Um, so uh, 1893, this was made for Hart and Sons in London. It's a late Strad period. Good, we've got someone there. A late period Strad. Uh, not an exact copy. It's... Um, we can tell it's not Stradivari. We can tell that it's English. So they weren't so great with this one. So this is like what I would call a, a three-quarter Vola Brothers violin. We, again, we don't know which Vola made which bits, pieces, who did what, um, but it's a very pretty violin and, and a very nice sounding one. Um, let's move on to something that's a little bit, the next level they did was a Galliano copy. So this is a Brothers Galliano copy. Now, if anyone watched last week, you would have seen I was talking about the Neapolitan school of makers, the Pestucci particularly, who made great copies. Well, this is an English version, so if you can see that. I'm going to put photos of these on my Facebook feed later on. But this is a Galliano copy, Brothers Galliano. Um, very tricky to sort of... When I got this violin, I was like, what is going on here? Um, I knew it wasn't a Galliano, it didn't quite have that age, um, but it was 95% convincing. And then it was told to me it was Vola. Um, so all things started coming together. But it's a very, very pretty violin, as you can see the back there and the front. Nice pegs and bits and pieces. Um, so we'll move on to it. Now the next type of violin they did was a pretty exact copy using bits and pieces. So here we have a Testore copy, which they made using bits of old violins. Okay, now these are the ones that are really hard to work out what they are. And these are the violins that have fooled many people. Um, this violin, certainly looking at the body, I can't quite work out what they've done. They've probably made the ribs, they've probably repurfled the back around here. Um, but the scroll is absolutely newish well you know made in about 1900 so we're now got 100 years of age so it's looking this is pretty good another 100 years we'll be selling this as a real thing um, now they also made the next level up they're exact copies that were made for Hart and Sons and they're labeled Hart and Sons exact copy of a certain instrument um, so it was all above board from about 1900 onwards that's when we have problems because they didn't generally label their, their instruments or stamp them. Um, they were working for Hammer in Germany, so people will know the Hammer family, Friedel and Hammer, Walter Hammer. Um, so they made him violins, and I think it was the famous firm of Hill and Sons 
they, I think William Ebsworth Hill went over to Stuttgart, looked at six Stradivari and said three were Vola. Okay. Now, they also made violins for Rembrandt Wurlitzer in New York. So they were sending him violins and there's correspondence saying, you know, thank you for the violins, I'll pay you 50 pounds for each violin you make us. Um, he was selling them for about 90. And there's one letter um, actually mentioned in the book of Vola, which uh, John Dilworth and uh, John Fairfax, Andrew Fairfax, sorry, and John Milnes wrote. There's a picture of William Vola there. That's a, a bit of a classic picture. Um, yes, yeah, so there's there's evidence that uh, Wurlitzer said, you know, it's a lovely looking violin, it doesn't sound so great. But anyway, um, they generally do sound very good. Um, what to look for in a Vola, it's hard to say because they're all so different. Uh, the most famous incident with the Volas was the Balfour Stradivari um, case where they made a Stradivari copy. Uh, a company called Balfour went to sell the violin as an original. They got a lot of certificates from around the world and the continent and London saying, yes, this is a Stradivari. They put it in auction. I think it sold. And then I think a letter appeared in the Strad magazine saying, you know, this violin needs to be taken out. May, uh, and it said, signed by people who know or uh, something like that, you know. So basically, but if you see the Balfour Stradivari copy, it's a lovely instrument. I've just seen photos of it. Um, I was told that ribs have been taken from that violin and stuck on a Strad. Um, but moving right along, that might not be true, I don't know. Um, now, how about I play a little bit just so you can hear what they sound like. They're all very different. It's hard with this little microphone that I bought. Um, I'll just play the uh, Testore copy. <laughs> I did some practice this week. First time in 15 years. <laughs> All right, the Stradivari copy. Let's have a quick play. It's a little bit more open, this violin, than the Testore. Then we have the Galliano copy. I think I prefer the, the Strad copy myself. Um, so basically, like I said, they were a bit of an enigma in the trade. They often made these beat up examples of uh, Galliano or whatever and stuck them in auctions. And uh, there was a story that one of the big violin dealers, when a certain violin was sold as a Ruggeri, the Volas left the room and the dealer said, well, now we know who made the Ruggeri. So Volas, I've seen one cello, I've seen one viola, I've seen 20 violins. Um, they all, the brothers, I think, shared a house together with their families. They were never wealthy. They didn't make much money out of it. But certainly their top end copying violins were uh, first class. And if you can get your hands on a vola, my advice is do so. They are amongst the best around. Um, talk next week. All the best. Bye bye.